So Banggood contacted me and asked me whether I wanted to review the SEMA X20. Now I've got the SEMA X5 and I really like that. I've got the X8 and between the 5 and the 8 it goes up in size quite a bit. So I was assuming the SEMA X20 is going to be one big quad. I didn't fully read the email. As you can see it's the X20 Pocket and it's a little tiny quad. Um, with a nice looking little transmitter all in the same sort of livery that my other ones are in which is in the white with the red on. Uh, I quite like them, I think they look quite smart. Built in prop guards by the looks of it, um, got altitude hold, one key landing and takeoff and, and all the usual thing does the flips and everything. Nice little box and on the back we've got a quick run through of what the instructions are for the transmitter and the, the flips and everything and just your warnings all in different languages there. You're going to need four AAA batteries it says for the actual transmitter and they're not included. So let's get it out and have a look see what we get. So very simple box. That's it. So uh, I, well there's no Wi-Fi with it, uh, no camera at all I don't think, which I think can be a benefit sometimes especially if you're learning and sometimes these things are just fine to fly and just good fun to fly without. Uh, transmitters looking really different. I'll get this all out on the bench and we've got a little pack of um, accessories as well there and then the instructions. There you go, that's it unboxed and really there's not much in the box at all but uh, that's quite nice actually because it comes fully assembled ready to fly. Uh, the only thing you would need to do is charge the battery up and uh, put the batteries in the transmitter. To uh, charge it up you simply connect it with the supplied uh, USB uh, charger cable here, plug it into this micro USB on the back and then plug this either into a mains adapter or you can just plug it into your computer and that will charge it up for you. Uh, you also get a little uh, Phillips screwdriver uh, that you can take the quad apart if you needed to. There's just four little screws there I think and then it should all pop apart. Uh, and then you also need that to take the battery bay door off and then you need those four AAA batteries which you need to pop in. The actual uh, quad itself is really nice it's lovely and light I'll put the weight down the bottom there and uh, having the prop guards already assembled is, is really nice actually I can't see a way of sort of popping them off without taking it apart so it's obviously just designed to stay there which is good if you're going to be I mean it's based on an indoor flyer I would imagine it's, that's what it's aimed at uh, so you really want to protect your furniture and everything I would suggest and save breaking your props if you do break your props you get a spare set of four props there as well and it's got quite a nice little bit of clearance there as well for, for when it lands so in little tiny rubber feet which uh, won't do an awful lot. Uh, I assume uh, they do one with a camera because I would imagine this is an LED and I'll just turn it on so we can just have a look. So, oh no it's not really an LED it's just the reflection of these ones up there. Uh, the LEDs are actually uh, quite bright and uh, you're going to be able to see them sort of from any angle as well I think. They're usually out on the end of the legs but on this one they've stuck them in on the body to, to keep all the weight in there I would imagine. The uh, batteries, a little single cell, 180 uh, milliamp hour, um, and I'll see how long that takes to charge. And it's uh, basically 105 millimeters sort of square on the outside of the uh, prop guard, 70 millimeters across the diagonal, and 50 millimeters across there, just if you need any sizes to compare it to anything else you're looking at. I'll just turn that off where we haven't got a lot of power in it. And then the transmitter uh, is actually quite tiny, really slim lined. Uh, it almost feels like a little phone, I would say. And the thing I noticed straight away when I picked it up was the there's no sticks on it. Um, as you can see, it's just literally a little flat plate. So there is no way you'll get in there as a pincher to fly. You will be flying on thumbs, definitely, without a doubt. And they stay flat as you push them around. I know that sounds a bit strange, but if you're already used to flying, and say you're flying with a stick, as you move the stick around it sort of leans obviously because uh, it's got the pivot point in the center with these they just stay flat so I'd be interested to see whether that feels any different when you're flying but uh, I don't know whether it will or it won't. Also on the uh, transmitter here they've got a, a little hole that obviously would take the, the holder for a phone I would imagine if you've got the Wi-Fi one. So I've got the battery on charge, quick look through the instruction manual. Um, the actual graphics on the front um, are look like they've taken off a screen or something or other because they've really got a jagged edge to them. Um, you'd hardly identify it as a quad to be honest. Uh, but apart from that the text and everything is really clear in here. SEMA usually do good uh, manuals. This one's no exception. Ne nice and clear, big bold text for you to read. Uh, all laid out on an A5 sheet, obviously black printed on white, nice and clean. It runs through all the functions and everything if you're new to flying this would help you it would get you started that's for sure and uh, what everything does have to calibrate the quads um, 
uh, even trimming operations and everything and I'll go through all these when we're actually out flying but it's a really nice little manual actually and nice and spacious as well all in one language uh, which is good I always prefer that rather than the dual language and then a quick rundown of uh, spare parts you want uh, and then uh, a sort of exploded view and if you've taken it apart if you need to change the battery or anything um, and all any spare parts you need as well there's six millimeter diameter uh, motors on this one as well and then it's got your sizes at the back and then some troubleshooting as well so no really nice little manual as i said to charge it simply plug the uh, cable into your computer or a mains adapter Simply plug it into the back here, make sure it's around the right way, obviously. And then unusually on this quad, you don't actually get any LEDs to tell you that it's actually connected and it's charging, but you do get a little LED at the end to tell you that it is charged. There we are, we're charged. And as you can see, you get a little LED at the back to tell you it is fully charged. Okay, so um, first of all, turn the transmitter on, then hold the button down here to turn the actual drone on. You get little flashing LEDs, as you can clearly see there. And then to bind, you simply go up and down, and then the flashing LEDs stop, and this goes solid on here as well. So the LEDs are quite bright, actually. It's a reasonably bright day, but pretty good. There's several ways of taking off. Uh, you can either put the throttle up and then bring it back to center, and that will start the motors up. You can pull the two in, so in and down, down into that position, and that will start them like that. That's also another way of stopping them. You can, uh, that, that just shows you how to start it that way. And then if you want to stop them, you just simply hold it down for about two or three seconds down the bottom there. So whether or not it will drop out of the sky if you do that, I don't know, but a little quad like this, two or three seconds is actually gonna be quite, <laughs> quite a long time to descend. It shouldn't be that high anyway. And the other way is you can do auto take off, auto landing with these two buttons here. So let's just give that a go. Oh, and you get a warning as well, so. Hey, that's actually quite nice. Wee, quite precise. Hey, this is literally my first go with these. Um, and I actually like it. I'm much better than my phone, I must admit. Yeah, a very slow, lethargic flyer, which is fair enough. Well, as you can see, it certainly does everything. I'm gonna pop it up into high rate, so simply press this one here. You get a big beep, <laughs> the size of the uh, uh, transmitter and the amount of beep it makes pretty impressive actually. Hey, that is nice. <laughs> I didn't think this would be so much fun actually. I don't know why, because seamers really do a good job. That's good. Yeah, nice going. I'm going to pop it up. Uh, hold down the um, flip button. That's this one here. Ah, you have to hold it down and choose a direction. There we go. Whoa, it's a nice little flipper. If you like flipping. Yeah. Very good indeed. Yeah, nice and precise. Look at that. So that's your in high rates. Well, come back here. There's a tiny bit of breeze in the garden. That's about all it would take with this. So that's your in high rates and that's low rate. So drastically different. And it's just got the two rates with it as well. Whoops. Just showing that the uh, prop guards do work really well. Uh, I'm going to try headless mode, so that's just simply hold this one down here. There we go. Cool, so you get that beep, beep, beep forever. <laughs> and you can uh, set the headless mode when, when you're first setting it up. There's a process that it gives you in the, uh, in the instructions. But well, it's certainly headless mode. Not something I really like. So, taking that back off. Oh, no, I haven't. Let's just change the rate. So hold that again. You get a huge beep, and that's back into normal mode. So yeah, that's much nicer. Well, let's do a quick range test then. I mean, from what I've seen of it flying so far, it flies more than far enough anyway. Gee, it was. That's a fair old range for a little quad. Well, I don't know how far that is, but... And the altitude hold works really well. I mean, these, these controls, I'm impressed with this. I like it, it's good. And actually the flight didn't seem like it was only gonna be two minutes either. So well, everything so far is very good indeed. 
and nice and simple if you're starting out you don't need you haven't got cameras you haven't got wi-fi bits you just got a really nice little transmitter uh, nice little flips if you want to do your tricks everything's pretty good on it actually and those leds even though it's reasonably bright they're pretty good yeah very good indeed and nothing's too too aggressive even in high rates Yeah, it's nice. Hey, <laughs> and yeah, like I say, the altitude hold works really well. Descends reasonably fast as well, which is good. It's got an auto landing on it, uh, so let's just do that. Like I say, it's drifting around a bit, slight bit of breeze. Just gonna press these two down. Oh, you get a nice big beep. Oh, that lands quite... Oh, it's doing the tigger bounce. Now, that's not unusual with auto landing once. So. <laughs> it really can't make up his mind whether he wants to land now. So just hold this one down. Hold your throttle down and it'll kill the throttle anyway. So, And again, like I say, several ways of starting this up as I showed. Oops. Oh, there we go. Very good indeed. Let's pace out how far that was. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. The best part of 20 metres then, which I think is more than adequate for something this size. To be honest, if you're flying more than that away, you won't even see it anyway. The only time you might see it would be at night with those LEDs. I like to say, lovely little precise flyer. I'll go and do something drastic now and fly straight through some leaves and that. Ah, it does it really well. Nice. Hey, we've got flashing LEDs. <laughs> really nice. I'm going to run that out uh, just the way I tend to run the reviews. I wouldn't recommend it if you're uh, obviously this is going to be your pride and joy but it just sometimes you get a really long flight afterwards so and uh, you can damage your batteries doing this though so just be a little bit careful. There we go that is definitely gone as you can see. There we go. So I'm going to bring that into land and just stop it. And of course you could hand land, hand take off as well with this thing because it's really nice and light. <laughs> Lovely looking and a really nice little fly. Excellent. Well done Seema. So what do I think of the little Seema X20? Well, I usually get negatives out of the way first of all. And to be honest, I can't think of any negatives with this apart from the usual one of I would, would have liked these to have been marked up to tell you what they are. To be honest, it's such a simple flyer um, and so easy to, to use. Um, you honestly don't need it. Once, once you've flown it once, honestly, you just know where everything is really simple. Uh, my one, this button is completely dud on my one, by the way. Uh, if you want to set the trims because it's drifting, uh, I would first of all calibrate it and that's all in the manual or to set the trims uh, you turn it on obviously get it all connected up then you hold this button down and you set the trims uh, but mine has no problem whatsoever flies really nicely and it should do straight out of the box anyway the um uh, flipping was good it was a good little flipper and the rates were definitely different that's what i really like it when it's got a very low rate so if you're a beginner you can just start uh, and, get, and get used to it really nice and slow everything's nice and slow on it and controlled and then when you get a bit better kick it up into high rates and then it really gets a big move on so and it was really good fun even uh, i mean i fly a lot of drones so uh, and i was still having really good fun with it it's a nice little flyer cracking looking as well really little, little bit of a different design and i do like this red and uh, white on it as well that seema seem to be doing on all their quads now so yeah big huge thumbs up pour up from tigger um, really nice if, if this is the sort of thing you're in the market for i think it would take quite a bit of beating mm -hmm.